reading to you from the authorized version of the scriptures. Please, I invite you to read along with me, to get your version, your copy of the authorized version, and read along with me today, word for word, verse by verse, of what we're going to be looking at today. Read along with me, be a Berean, search the scriptures daily, what do these things be so? Read along with me, because the mouth goes quicker than the brain sometimes, okay? So please, read along with me at the scriptures we are going to be looking at. Read along in the authorized version, the perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration, word of God. Period. Reading to you from Ecclesiastes 7. Verses 7 on to verse 10. Surely, not temple, surely oppression maketh a wise man mad, and a gift destroyeth the heart. Hmm. Recently saw a really good, which will be in the description box, uh, kind of a rant video from our beloved brother Alexander Hartley, um, and uh, and he started that well, that video off in quite quite a way by mentioning how he saw a bumper sticker about uh, we Americans are PO'd, okay, <laughs> all right, and likewise, my response also is to that, so what, so what. Have you saints noticed that people seem to be a little bit more angrier now than they were a little while ago? Have you noticed that? People will say, well, it's always been like this from, from, yeah, but it seems to be increasing more recently, isn't it? Isn't it? And apparently, as I am informed, that today there's some kind of thing going on um, where I don't know uh, some kind of summit and whatnot and we're seeing all these things coming to pass apparently but we not we need to remember brethren dear saints what have we to fear what have we to fear surely oppression maketh a wise man wise wisdom Wise man. Who is a wise man? Someone who fears the Lord. So surely oppression maketh a wise man mad. Mad is not denoting anger. Mad is cuckoo, crazy, insane. Surely oppression maketh a wise man mad. Drives us crazy, doesn't it? Seeing how things are going right now. And how illogical and unsensible some people are getting and being and behaving especially these Christians right yeah and a gift destroyeth the heart a gift now salvation is a gift it is a free gift yes by his grace through our faith. Okay, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And the works, of course, that he's talking about are the works of the law. Okay? So, a gift destroyeth the heart. Your heart needs to be broken before the Lord can fix it. You need to be broken before you can be fixed. But see, oppression, which makes a wise man mad, maketh a wise man mad, a wise man, someone who fears the Lord, and a gift destroyeth the heart. Hmm. Look at the gifts that Satan is giving to mankind right now, being allowed to give because of judgment. Okay, Look at what Satan, within the guise of Christianity, is giving to these Christians who are deceived by what Satan is offering. Woman bleeding ate my gifts. Man is close behind. Huh. Interesting. 
where salvation is a free gift from God and a gift destroyed the heart the gifts that Satan is giving people right now it's destroying them obviously we see that we know that and it's like ah, want us that we're pulling out the hair of our head right surely oppression maketh a wise man mad and a gift destroyeth the heart better is the end of a thing than the beginning there what is our end? We came into this world screaming and crying. Okay? Hold your place here. Let's, uh, Job, let's read the words of Job. Job chapter 1, verses 21 on to verse 22. And said, uh, let's read 20 on to verse 22. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped and said naked came I out of my mother's womb and naked shall I return thither the Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away blessed be the name of the Lord and all this Job sinned not nor charged God foolishly foolishly Behaving, speaking, acting as if you say in your heart, there is no God. Unfortunately, a lot of saints can act that way. But didn't charge God foolishly. Go back to Ecclesiastes 7. Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. We came out screaming naked out of our mother's womb. And we're going to go out naked. Because we can't take anything with us. Paul talks about that. Go find it. Okay? Better is the end of, the th of a thing than the beginning thereof. This thing called our lives. You and I, saint, fellow saint, we have an expected end. We're going to have to stand before the Lord at the judgment seat of Christ. Oh boy. But see, our end, we have an expected end. This is not it. And see, I am onto those so-called atheists. And so many of these Christians, this is it. And we know that's not the truth. The truth. Better for us, better for us is our end than our beginning. And the ah, patience in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. Well, wow, hold your place. Proverbs 14. Proverbs 14. Verses 1 on to verse 3. Every wise woman buildeth her house. Woman? Wise woman? Hmm. Wise, wisdom, fear of the Lord. A wise woman, one who fears the Lord, buildeth her house. But the foolish plucketh it down with her hands. Mm. Fool says in his heart there is no God. And again, foolish, behaving as if you say in your heart there is no God. He that walketh in his uprightness feareth the Lord. Now, remember, this was a different dispensation. Okay, keeping the law. But our instruction in righteousness in the Proverbs here. He that walketh in his uprightness, according to the scriptures, feareth the Lord. But he that is perverse in his ways despiseth him. Oh, kind of like despising the word. Hey, Lord's been giving you some gems recently, brother. Praise the Lord. In the mouth of the foolish. Foolish. There we see that thing. Foolish again. Saw it in Job. Behaving as if you say in your heart, there is no God. 
In the mouth of the foolish is a rod of pride, but the lips of the wise shall preserve them. Mm. Go back to Ecclesiastes chapter 7. Verse 8 again. Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. And the patience <laughs> in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. And what, would, what did we just look at? In verse 3 in Proverbs 14. In the mouth of the foolish is a rod of pride. Pride. You are your own God. You are self-righteous. And we, as saints, <laughs> we have to be patient. We have to be patient. I know, we're not doctors, I get it. But we have to be patient. Because why? Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. And the patient is in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. And the proud in spirit, look at this! Calling evil good and good evil. <laughs> you know, are, are they? Can they blush anymore? Can people blush anymore? Are people ashamed anymore? No. They go and strut their stuff, and some shouldn't do that <laughs> for sure. But they go and strut their stuff brazenly, declaring their sin as Sodom. Or brazenly declaring their self-righteousness. I'm saved because of what I have done. I have just believed. We won't get off on that. Be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry. Angry. For anger resteth. in the bosom of fools. Mm. Now, there's nothing wrong with anger. Brad, wait, 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 wait. There's nothing wrong with anger in the appropriate context. Okay? They call it righteous indignation, and righteous indignation is not determined by what you think. Righteous indignation is determined by Scripture. Dear Saint, yeah, I'm not, we're not talking to the lost. Saint, dear Saint, doesn't it make you angry? <laughs> Surely oppression makes the wise man mad? <laughs> doesn't it make you angry that people are being lied to? Doesn't it make you angry that on every corner there is a bail house associated with Roman Catholicism? Hmm? Doesn't it make you angry that Christianity is leading people to hell? Hmm? Of course it does. Because it's against our Father. It's not the faith that was once delivered onto the saints. Be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry. Don't be hasty, you know. Do not, be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry. Don't be qu quick to be angry. Um, those who are angry at the drop of a hat or a drop of a couch on a toe or whatnot, that's foolish. Remember, the patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. And the proud boasteth. They go their way declaring everything. You know, like it says, hold your place. Like it says in uh, Psalm 10. Like it so says in uh, Psalms 10. You know? <laughs> Psalm 10. <laughs> Verses 1 on the verse... Uh, well, we could read the whole thing, but... 1 on the verse 4. Why standest thou afar off, O Lord? Why hidest thou thyself in times of trouble? The wicked in his pride doth persecute the poor. Uh-huh. 
Let them be taken in the devices that they have imagined. You know, in Job, I, I, I think it's Job where the fire will uh, envelop himself. That's not verbatim. But the fire that comes from Satan will eventually destroy himself. Referencing, of course, the lake of fire. These devices that the Jesuits have imagined and are employing right now, it's made to destroy. It's made to kill. Christianity, Christianity is made to destroy, is made to kill. Okay? The faith that was once delivered unto the saints, yes, it destroys your self-righteousness. But after that, after that, it's on to his glory. There's a big difference there. The wicked in his pride doth persecute the poor. Let them be taken in the devices that they have imagined. The wicked boasteth of his heart's desire. You trust in your own heart? Scripture calls you a fool. Okay? And blesseth the covetous whom the Lord abhorreth. You know, we always associate covetousness, right, with the acquiring of things, right? Or wanting things. It's deeper than that. Wanting to do what you want to do. You're coveting when you follow your own way. Did you ever thought about that? That you're showing covetousness by doing what you want to do? Most of you have, of course. But just saying it. Remember, the Lord abhors covetous, whom the Lord abhorreth. Abhor means to have extreme great hatred for. But the God, the Jesus of Christianity, loves you unconditionally. Like I've like been constantly saying to you, atheists can figure that one out, that that's not the truth. Okay? The wicked, through his pride, the wicked through, excuse me, th excuse me, that's why you read along with me. The wicked through the pride of his countenance, countenance, the bodily, his uprightness, he, look at me, you know. A proud, six things that the Lord hates. Well, number the, I believe number one is a proud look, okay. Someone can correct me on that or put that in this uh, comment section. The wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. Verse 9 again in Ecclesiastes 7. Be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry, for anger resteth in the bosom of fools. Now, and again, saints, saints, doesn't it make you angry to see a whorehouse a church building? Oh, yeah, you heard me say it. A church building on every corner? Virtually all of them pre uh, preaching this uh, uh, easy believism or Catholic works salvation? Hmm? Isn't that, doesn't that make you angry? Surely oppression maketh a wise man ah, mad. <laughs> Ephesians 4 Ephesians 4 Ephesians 4 verses 26 on to verse 27 Be ye angry You can get angry Is the cause just? Or is it because your little tootsies got hurt because you dropped a big couch on it or something? You can be angry is your anger righteous? Hmm? Be ye angry and sin not. Oh. oh, but you're you're perfect and never sin when you are angry. Huh? Yeah, go away. Go away. Even the greatest of the church, Paul, 
He messed up. He did what he hated. He did. Paul had a pride problem. He did. Got to remember that, saints. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Going to bed angry. It's, it's useless. It's useless. It disturbs your rest. It throws everything out of balance. You can be angry. But sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Because when you go to bed angry, when you sin in your anger, what are you doing? Neither give place to the devil. You're giving place to the devil. And as we are seeing today, that spark, that lighter <laughs> being lit in anger. So what? So what? You're angry. People are angry. So what? What's going to happen in that anger? It's called an implosion. It's called an implosion. Kind of like what happened to uh, uh, with that one submarine thing that imploded and those guys went to <laughs> were judged right away. And probably all of them went to hell. Okay? Unfortunately. But see, when you sin in your anger, you don't let it go. Okay, you're harboring. Anger resteth in the bosom of fools. Resteth. Stays. We're, we're at bosom. Chest area. Okay. Um, what's so associated with the chest area? Lungs, yeah, but your heart. Mm. So when you do these things and just don't let them go, you're giving place to the devil. And see, the problem that Christianity and a lot of Christians have with the thing about anger, okay, is, again... Matthew chapter 5. Uh, we, we've discussed about the Sermon on the Mount. The Sermon on the Mount is so beautiful. It is. It's not doctrine for us today, people. And when you try to apply it doctrinally today, you're a mess. Like, mark the mess. Okay? You're, you, you're just a mess. Okay? Instruction in righteousness is there. Yes. Doctrine. No, it's not for us today. Doctrinally. But see what happens. They go to Matthew chapter 5. Okay? Matthew chapter 5. And here's, and here's the thing that really, really gets me angry about what Satan has done with the Bibles. Matthew 5, Sermon on the Mount, Doctrine for the Kingdom of Heaven. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you, I say unto you, the King who is offering the Kingdom of Heaven unto the Jewish people, was saying unto his future subjects, future meaning uh, after the uh, time of Jacob's trouble at the second coming, the kingdom of heaven, okay? Which he was offering. But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother, now see, if you've got something that isn't the scriptures, the authorized version, without a cause, is not in the Bibles. Check your ESV. Check your um, NIV. Check your New American Standard. I think they keep that in in the non-King James Version, but that, that thing is whatever. Okay, that don't use that. Okay? They take out without cause. So, Christianity 
which is not even fueled by a Bible anymore. They come to this. It's like, whoever is angry at his brother is what? Shall be in danger of the judgment without cause. And what determines that cause? You? Because your little tootsies was there? Or scripture? Who determines the cause? Your God. Well, if you are your own God, then there you go. And see, why is he saying this? But I say unto you, the king speaking during the kingdom of heaven. Okay? Um, <laughs> your judgment is going to be specifically of the Lord. Okay? Going before him while he's sitting on the throne during the kingdom of heaven. Kingdom of heaven, don't believe these Richlingite free gracer devils. Okay? It's not by grace through faith during the kingdom of heaven. It's all works. Okay? Please. Saints, you know that. You know that. But you other, please don't be deceived by these people. Please. Even though their gospel they offer you is very appealing to your flesh. Okay? To stay away from it. Okay? But, Jesus is king on the throne. They're going to have to go before him. <sighs> and what is worse for the evildoer? To be judged of a man or of God? You figure that one out. Okay? But, but I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause... Who is my brother? Shall be in danger of the judgment. Okay? And whosoever shall say to his brother, and who is my brother? One second, please. I'm writing down, yeah, you know. Who is my brother? <laughs> and whosoever shall say to his brother, Kreka shall be in danger of the council. Whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. And again, they say, you call people fools. Yeah. Well, it says, Thou fool shall be in danger of hellfire. You're not rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay? The fool says in his heart, there is no God. The kingdom of heaven, you're going to see God sitting on a throne in Jerusalem. How in the wide world of sports entertainment, besides your pride, are you going to be able to say there is no God when you're going to see him? You get it? <laughs> okay? So, during the kingdom of heaven, you call someone a fool, who, and the fool says in his heart there is no God, uh, the Lord on the uh, Hello! Here I am! I'm on the throne! Can't you see me? Okay? But see, the Bible's messed us up. And Christianity will mess this up with someone getting angry, okay, and say, you're in danger of what? You're in danger of judgment. You're in danger of hellfire. Okay, you're saying to your brother, Chreka, who is my brother? You are because you say you are? <laughs> yeah, I think perhaps maybe no. <laughs> I think perhaps maybe no. Okay. But see, that's what they do. And see, in the scriptures, Jesus got angry. And see, in the Bibles, they take out without a cause. And when Jesus gets angry, well then, according to a Bible, which takes out without a cause, I guess Jesus was in danger of judgment and of hellfire. Well, don't you Christians say, well, whosoever is angry at his brother shall be in danger of judgment? And yeah, you say that. Without a cause. And see, that's the problem. That's the problem. That Christianity has in, has introduced. We can be angry. 
We can get angry. You and I, saints, like we are looking at, uh, you know, going off of Ecclesiastes 7. And that's not even the main gist of what we're going to get at today. Okay? But, okay, remember, anger resteth in the bosom of fools. The cause of your anger, saints, is the cause that makes our Lord angry. We are to abhor that which is evil and cleave to that which is good. I love children. Therefore, I hate abortion. Okay? I love freedom. Therefore, I hate oppression. I love truth. Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. Therefore, I hate lies. God loves you. God loves you unconditionally. <laughs> Believe and receive. <laughs> so, the cause of our anger, dear saints, is an anger that is a righteous anger. But see what happens. Romans chapter 7. That what I hate, that I do. Okay? That which I hate, that I do. Okay? But also, in Hebrews chapter 11, Hebrews chapter 11, verses 25 and 26, Moses, Moses, Moses. Uh, let's read verses 24 on to verse 26. Okay. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He refused to be linked up with Egypt, the things of the world. See, do you go to the Lord for comfort or to the devil for comfort? Who comforts you? Does the Lord or the devil? And see, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. A season. Literal season, like a growing season, or the season that could be called our lives. That is here for a moment and then gone. The pleasures of sin. I've seen Christians justify, just like Jesuits do, uh, virtually any kind of sin that they commit under the guise of just believe. I've seen it. I've witnessed it. Okay? So have you saints. Okay? Well, all the world is going to Hades. Here we are saints, living as ambassadors for Christ. Seeking to live our lives in accordance with the scriptures. And they look at us as if we are strange, don't they? How come you're not mad about what's going on? I'm not crazy. Why aren't you angry? Well, I, I'm angry at the works of the devil, absolutely. But see, we're, we're this big in comparison to the whole grand scheme of things. You, can't, you shouldn't be ignorant of what's happening. But here's the thing. <laughs> we got it on a really good authority of what's coming, brethren. What can we do about it? We can do nothing about it. The Lord can do something about it. But see, it's an individual basis. Okay? I don't know why people are... I, I do know why, because they're deceived. But there are people out there that actually believe in their head that my country of America, in which I reside, can write itself. Little, little crazy. Crazy. Okay? Absolutely crazy. Okay? But see, with what's happening now, especially what, what's coming down the pipe, you know, um, our currency, 
<laughs> our way of life. I was thinking about this yesterday because right now as we speak, brethren, we here personally are going through some extreme, extreme spiritual attacks. Oh. Oh. Started yesterday. And it's ongoing. We are experiencing, my wife and I, we are experiencing extreme spiritual satanic attacks. You, you uh, Richlingites out there who are praying to your father, the devil, that uh, um, he be allowed to um, to uh, attack us. <laughs> your father, the devil, is answering your prayers. Bravo. Okay? But we are going through quite quite a horrific amount of spiritual attacks right now. But see, I'm going to hold to the scriptures. Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. Hmm. 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 You might be saying, well, Brad, what does that have to do with anger? Well, Satan can deceive any one of us, or trick any one of us, he really can, uh, for a moment at least, thinking that you're justified in a certain thing that you're angry at. And then, when you sin, and don't let it go, but it festers. Be not, back in Ecclesiastes 7 verse 9, Be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry, for anger resteth in the bosom of fools. <laughs> Jonah. Go to Jonah. Okay. Go to Jonah. My man Jonah. I like the book of Jonah. <laughs> Jo Jonah, our man Jonah, <laughs> he he uh, he talked about somebody who needed an attitude adjustment. Okay, <laughs> and let me see. Jonah chapter four verses nine on to verse ten. And God said to Jonah, "Doest thou well to be angry for the gore?" And he said, Jonah, to God, I do well to be angry, even unto death. The gourd, because the Lord spared Nineveh. Or, uh, yeah, Nineveh. Yeah, he spared them because they turned at the preaching of Jonah. And behold, uh, greater than Jonah is here. Okay? But they repented. Okay? They repented of, you know, of Jonah. Uh, a video on Jonah will be in the description box, okay? But, and then he said to the Lord, it's like, Oi, vey, Lord, I knew you, I, Lord, I know you're merciful. Wasn't this what I was talking about? I go and warn them, you're going to spare them. Jonah was angry because the Lord spared someone their wrath, at least for the moment. Jonah was angry at that. And he was refocusing in a way if you will because of the of the gourd he was like taking it out oh the gourd which comforted him with an extreme heat and interestingly enough right here today in Illinois, we these next two days is going to be sweltering heat uh, uh when when i was down in shelbina uh the the one day we're walking by the bank up there um in front of the the one that you don't know what i'm talking about never mind in front of the grocery store it was like, wow, it's 100 degrees in, out here. I mean, it was hot. We got this humidity here. And there's a creek right over there, too, which is not helping. But um, it's brutally hot here, um, especially with that oppressive humidity. Okay? But Jonah was angry at root because of the Lord's mercy. Brethren, you know, if one of our, one of my deadliest, not my deadliest enemy, but if one of the people who would kill me with a baseball bat and drive me over with a car or one of these devils 
one of these devils were to get saved, truly saved, I would rejoice. I would be happy. Praise the Lord! He did a miracle. <laughs> okay? And in order for someone who has already chosen to go after Satan, for them to actually turn, repent of themselves, and get saved, that's a miracle. Jonah. Jonah. Check this out. And God said to Jonah, Doest thou well to be angry for the gourd? And he said, I do well to be angry even unto death. I love this. I love this. Then said the Lord, Thou hast had pity on the gourd, for the which thou hast not labored, neither made it grow. Oh, you get, you're getting it? Yeah? Okay. Which came up in the night and perished in the night. Hmm. Hmm. Perished in the night. Hmm. Perished in the night. Back in Ecclesiastes 7, which we are still haven't gotten out of. <laughs> Ecclesiastes 7, verse 8. Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. And the patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. Hmm. We're here for a moment and then we're gone. Verse 11. And should I not spare Nineveh, Nineveh, excuse me, Nineveh, that great city, wherein are more than six score thousand persons that cannot discern between their right hand and their left hand, and also much cattle? Be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry. For anger resteth in the bosom of fools. Hmm. Say not thou, What is the cause that the former days were better than these? For thou dost not inquire wisely concerning this. And that's kind of a no-brainer for us, but for those of you who are not saints of the Church of the Living God, it's like, what happened? What hit us? You who are not saved, you're enjoying the pleasures of sin for a season. Here today, gone tomorrow. Mankind is getting worse. The world is getting worse. Evil is good and good is evil today. What the Jesuits are able to get away with today, they couldn't have done even 20 years ago. But they're getting away with it now. And it's the Hegelian dialect or the Hegelian principle, argument, counter-argument to control the outcome. They're playing both sides. And what is the outcome? What is the outcome? Well, eventually, better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. We won't get caught up. And what's the end game? To establish that, that, that man, that man of sin, son of perdition, and his system, which is already in place. That spirit of Antichrist. And it's on the horizon. Only he who now letteth will let the body of Christ until he be taken out of the way. It's, 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 it's a revolving circle. Okay? It's a revolving circle. Okay? <laughs> That's what it is. And we're seeing it. We are seeing it, dear brethren. And we shouldn't be alarmed by this at all. And most of us saints are not, but, you know, we have it on excellent, perfect authority that this was going to be happening. And now we're seeing it. 
and there's nothing we can do about it. But what we can do is, like I always mention to you about the thing about the Titanic sinking, okay? And those guys, I watched the documentary, kind of movie documentary, if you will, on the guys who were shoveling coal into the boilers of the Titanic uh, before she split in half and then it was futile, okay? But, um, yeah, shoveling coal on the Titanic as it's sinking. Hope, hope giving that one person, that one chance for that one person. Proverbs 23. Today is the 23rd. <laughs> Proverbs 23. Proverbs 23. Now, I, I believe we've covered this um, in another video, which I can't remember offhand. But we're going to go, uh, we've read these scriptures before, but I'm going to go over these again today because I find this very fascinating. Okay? I, I, that's what it is. It's the two rulers video. <laughs> uh, sitting between two rulers, okay? And again, okay, where do you go for comfort? To the Lord or to the devil? When thou sittest to eat with a ruler, consider diligently what is before thee. And put a knife to thy throat, if thou be a man given to appetite. Mm. Covetous of appetite. Okay? What is before you? Like Moses said, you know, I put before you life and death. Choose life. What is life? Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. But what is death? I'm not that bad. I will be like the Most High. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. That's death. That's death. Be not desirous of his dainties, for they are deceitful meat. See, the faith that was once delivered unto the saints I've told you, like we know, saints. It's first a death to yourself before it can ever be a glory. But if there is no death of self, then what is it? It's deceitful meat. It's poisonous. It's poisonous. And Satan wants you to feel good. Where the Lord wants you to be broken so that he, he can fix you. Be not desirous of his dainties, for they are deceitful meat. Labor not to be rich. Cease from thine own wisdom. Because the fool says in his heart there is no God. I will be like the Most High. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. <laughs> Wilt thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? You got to remember the time that is coming after we get redeemed, the time of Jacob's trouble. All these steps that are being implemented today are stepping points for the inevitable, eventual mark of the beast system which if you take in your right hand or in your forehead you even take it you're going to hell ticket punch stamp you're out of here okay you're out of here hmm wilt thou set thine eyes upon that which is not for riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away as an eagle toward heaven. All these riches you're not going to take with you. The type of riches that you need to seek after are the ones that are going to be given to us as rewards. But there again, are you seeking only the riches? Got to be careful with that. I've talked to some saints 
who are very well I'm just I just want rewards I just brother if rewards come <laughs> praise you but um, okay that's not that ought not to be the fuel for the fire that ought not to be the premise in which well I'm doing this just for rewards Look, am I the only one that sees a problem with that I know I'm not but you know you gotta be careful Wilt thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? Now, you know, the riches that the Lord gives us endureth forever, yes. But see, Satan comes along and tries to mimic that with worldly things. And some saints, some saints, yes, some saints have mistaken sometimes something that they thought was a blessing from the Lord, but it was something Satan was allowed to trip you up. Oh, that's happened quite a few times, actually, by people who have come and gone. And then when you look back at it, it's like, whoa, wait a minute. You know? It happens. It does happen. Verse 6. Eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye, and their right eye shall be darkened. Hmm. Neither desire thou his dainty meats. I love this verse. I love this verse. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. I love that. Now stop. As he thinketh in his heart. Well, I know in my heart. What is that? That's Proverbs 28. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, Proverbs 28. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> verse 26. He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. But whoso walketh wisely, according to Scripture, he shall be delivered. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. You are your own God? I know in my heart. God knows my heart. He sure does. He sure does. I don't know his heart. Well, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For as he thinketh in his heart, I'm saved because I'm ju I just believe. Metaphysical mind science. If you believe it, you can achieve it. It's, it's fascinating when you really look deep into it, how similar... Um, easy believism is with the wacky nut job stuff of Christian science. Oh, easy believism is much more defined than that nonsense, but it's premise. You are your own God. That's the premise of it. It's satanic. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. There have been people in the past who have helped us and looking back at it, you know, wish they never had. <laughs> you know, it's like, I mean, grateful for that thing at the time, but it's like, upon further revelation, it's like, oh, wow, you, you're not saved. I'm sorry, <laughs> you know. The morsel which thou hast eaten shalt thou vomit up and lose thy sweet words. Again, where do you go to comfort? Hmm? See, the comfort that the devil through the flesh, the world, and the devil offer you is a fleeting comfort. The comfort of the Lord, you know, the Lord is referred to as the comforter, you know, the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that spirit, okay, that dwells in you. We're going through some incredible, incredible spiritual attacks right now. But yet, I have a peace about it. Because I know who's in control. And the Lord's will will be done. Verse 7. 
Verse 9. Speak not in the ears of a fool, for he, or she, <laughs> for he will despise the wisdom, wisdom, fear of the Lord, of thy words. Make no friendship with an angry man, lest thou learn his ways. Okay? Proverbs 26. <laughs> uh, Proverbs 26. Verses 4 and verse 5. Answer not a fool according to his folly, lest thou also be like unto him. Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own conceit. And that's the thing with a lot of the devils who attack people. They want to get you off your rocker and go down to their level and do what they do. And in position like this, Sometimes that is a requirement, but I mean, have you, he who has uh, no rule over his, his own spirit, you know, is like a bar without, a castle without bars or something like that. I'm totally bradizing that, excuse me, okay? But, you know, brethren, people are angry. So what? So what? Here's some peace for you. Can I tell you about the Lord Jesus Christ? Can I tell you how the Lord saved someone who, like me who deserves to be in hell? Can I tell you about the Lord and His mercy and His grace? Stonewall. I'm seeing a lot more of that now recently. Like, I, it varies, but more so recently, more so recently, been seeing this elevation of hostility. Well, it's always been there. Well, yes, it has. But it is increasing. And any of you saints out there who are ever out there doing anything for the Lord, you know that. And like our dear brother uh, with that beautiful video, uh, the Lord's given you some gems lately, brother. Praise the Lord. Um, you know, so what? So what? What? Here. The Lord Jesus Christ. Can I tell you about the Lord Jesus? Come. Let us reason together. But remember, pride goes before fall. And... Isn't it interesting, too, with the whole thing about the pride? You know, the sodomite agenda, the LGBTQ thing. Um, pride goeth before destruction and the Holy Spirit before a fall. And, and these, these crazy date setter guys like Mr. Breaker Breaker. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, um, they, they go off on all that. They go off on, oh, this, the, what is it? What's, what's, what's? Uh, what is it, September 12th or 23rd, uh, Mr. Breaker Breaker apparently has one from a couple of years where he's talking about the 23rd, he's for some whatever reason, but the redemption of the purchased possession does draw nigh. It draweth nigh. I believe we are getting closer. Nothing to do with that crazy whack job September thing, not, none of that stupid nonsense. That's a distraction. Okay, none of that garbage. None of that. None of that. Okay, and remember, brethren, when you got Christians out there saying, well, it could be the 12th or whatever it is, the 23rd or whatever, keep in mind, you know, really, it's like the Lord is like, <laughs> well, it for surely will not happen on the 23rd. Okay, for surely. <laughs> and not surely temple, thank you. Okay, <laughs> just remember that. Just remember that, okay? But go to Isaiah. Uh, oh, no, wait, 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 wait. We're getting ahead of ourselves. Verses 17 now in Proverbs 23. Verses 17 on verse 21. Let not thine heart envy sinners. Don't aspire to have anything that the world or Christianity offers you. Remember, what is Christianity today? 
You can make all your arguments about what it might have once been. It doesn't matter. What is it now? That's what matters. It's not the faith that was once delivered onto the saints. We need to have distinction. God is a God of distinction. Okay? All right? Let not thine heart envy sinners, but be thou in the fear of the Lord all the day long. For surely, not surely temple, for surely there is an end. And thine expectation shall not be cut off. Not for what we're talking about. Could that be a reference, a link on to eternal security for today in this dispensation? Uh, this was written under the law. But instruction and righteousness in that verse, for surely there is an end. What is our end? To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Or... Come on, brother! And, and we go up. For surely there is an end, and thine expectation shall not be cut off. Now, under the law, you are doing what the law said. Okay? Different dispensation. Faith and works. And remember, the faith under the law that you were having in, was what God was going to do because of you doing what he said in the law. Today, our faith is in what? It's finished. In Christ Jesus. That's our faith. He is our faith. Okay? He died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures and shed his blood on the cross. Okay? Our faith is on Jesus. It's in him. Okay? It's finished. Okay? That's the difference. All right? Our expectation shall not be cut off. Hear thou, my son, and be wise, and guide thine heart in the way. The way. The way found in Scripture. And, and I, I gave her credit for it, and I'll do so again. Little stupid head Christy Burke, she was right. Okay? The faith that was once delivered unto the saints was once called the way. Okay? And history backs that up. Scripture even, come, you know, backs that up. Okay? But, hear thou, my son, and be wise, and guide thine heart in the way. How do you do that? By living your life according to the Scriptures. Be not among wine-bibbers. Come out from amongst them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord. What fellowship? What fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? What concord hath Christ with Belial? You know, don't let an ox and an ass plow together, okay? Because it's uneven, unequal, unequally yoked. Be not, be not unequally yoked with unbelievers? Oh, but they profess with their lips, don't they? Sure do. But in their heart, they are their own God. Be not among wine bibbers, amongst riotous eaters of the flesh. And, and, and I'm sorry, right there, wine bibbers, the Catholic... Uh, Woody, Woody, you abracadabra, hocus pocus with the wine, the Jesuit priest turning it into the blood of Christ and the wafer cookie. Abracadabra! It's, it's the wafer cookie is Jesus, right? Right. Yeah. Be not among wine bibbers, among riotous eaters of the flesh. For the drunkard and the glutton shall come to poverty, and drowsiness shall clothe the man with rags. And interesting, drunken, drunkard, glutton, wine bibbers, eater, riotous eaters of the flesh. And when you read in Revelation chapter 17, when you read and get over there, Revelation chapter 17, 
Boy, it's really hot. <laughs> uh, verse 2. Uh, 1 and 2. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither. I will shew unto thee the great the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. And verse 15, And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, sitteth Roman Catholicism, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Verse 2, With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Isaiah 29. Isaiah 29. It's easy for us fretting. It's easy for us to fret. The Lord taught me an incredible lesson recently about fretting. He really has. Worry profiteth a man nothing. Fretting. Fretting profiteth a man nothing. But Isaiah 29, verses 9 on to verse 12. Stay yourselves and wonder. Cry ye out and cry. They are drunken, but not with wine. They stagger, but not with strong drink. You're like, what? Wait, wait. Keep reading. For the Lord hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep. We addressed this in the previous video. Okay? The one with the uh, Isaiah 6 video, which I was so happy that the Lord finally allowed to come to pass. But stay yourselves in wonder. Cry ye out and cry. How, how, how can they fall for this? They are drunken, but not with wine. They stagger, but not with strong drink. For the Lord hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep, and hath closed your eyes. The prophets and your rulers, the seers, hath he covered. Oh, elect and not elect? No, we have free will. We have free will. Okay? We have free will. We do. But see, when you make the choice contrary, contrary to the Lord. Hold your place here and go to Isaiah 64. Isaiah 64. It's, it's so hot and I'm using Cambridge that was given me. Yes. Uh, let me see. One second, I gotta find this. Isaiah 66. Isaiah 66, verses 3 on to verse 4. He that killeth a man, he that killeth an ox as if he slew a man. He that sacrificeth a lamb as if he cut off a dog's neck. He that offereth an oblation as if he offered swine's blood. He that burneth incense as if he blessed an idol. Yea, they have chosen their own ways. Their soul delighteth in their abominations. I will I also will choose their delusions. And will bring their fears upon them. Fear of the wicked will come upon them. Because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear. But they did evil before mine eyes and chose that in which I delighted not. And what did we read? What did we read in the Proverbs? Proverbs 23, huh? verse 9. Speak not in the ears of a fool, for he will despise the wisdom of thy words. Back to Isaiah 29. Verse 11. Now here comes religiosity. And the vision of all has become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed. The scriptures are sealed to those who are lost. You're like, wait a minute, Brad. Okay, yes. Lost people can read the scriptures. Yes, they can. And they can be given enough 
to lead them on to Christ. Absolutely. I as a lost man, the Lord led me to himself through the book of Romans, reading the book of Romans. I was lost, and I read, was reading through the book of Romans. He led me to himself. Yes, but the deeper things, the deeper truths of Scripture, which the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of truth, who will lead you, guide you into all truth, the Lord himself, through the Scriptures, will expound to you the Scriptures. Okay? That is what is lacking in Christianity, because it is not of God. Lost people, yes, can read the scriptures. Absolutely. But see, what has happened in religiosity and Christianity, in order to be a preacher, pastor today, you need a $100,000 piece of paper on your wall that says Satan, ha or excuse me, Jesuits, yeah, Satan has said, I'm authorized to do this. And you got to go to the government. So, the populace today, who are, are faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by what? The word of God. And there's a famine going on right now, not in its fulfillment, but in type, where people are not hearing the words of God because they're, if they're hearing anything, they're hearing it from a Bible. So when someone inquires and goes to one of these pastor guys in one of these uh, whorehouses, church buildings, and the vision of all has become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed, which men deliver to one that is learned, saying, read this. I pray thee, and he saith, I cannot, for it is seed. Well, we don't have a perfect standard. The, the originals, which don't exist, uh, they're, they're the ones that were perfect. But even those people who go to that argument, even they will say, well, we don't have the originals. So wait. You're saying the originals, the ones actually written by David and Isaiah himself, the one that was written by Moses himself, actually penned by them. Those were the originals. But they themselves will say they don't have the originals. But those were the ones that were inspired. So there isn't a perfect word of God. So the best we got, not a perfect standard. See how that works? See how that works? What becomes the standard? They do. More on that in a second. And the book is delivered to him that is not learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he saith, I am not learned. Uh, how many times have you, brethren, heard, Well, I can't understand the scriptures? You read the book of Romans. You lost people, you start in the book of Romans. It cuts you, it, it cuts you to pieces, doesn't it? Oh, it sure does. Especially when you tell them, the um, book of Romans is about you. It's about me. I've, I've seen this a lot. Yeah, it's about you personally. About me personally. It, it, are you deaf? Yeah, it's about you personally. Okay? Because the scripture in Hebrews chapter 4, Hebrews chapter 4, 12, Hebrews chapter 4, 12, okay? The scriptures, not 12, 4, Brad. Man, it's hot. <laughs> Hebrews 4.12 For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing, even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and joints and marrow, that's a body, the whole person, okay? And is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. See, these people can go to a Bible. One of your choosing. And whatever you choose might make it a little easier to accept this Christianity. But see, you go to the scriptures. Seeking the Lord and the faith that was once delivered unto the saints, it going to tear your hide off. It's going to rip you to shreds. It's going to pummel you. You're, it's going to bring you on your knees on a, in a concrete floor, snot all over you, sweating, crying, crying out. That's what the Word of God, the Scriptures, is going to do to you. And see, that must be there in order for the comfort that comes from the Lord to be there. But see, when you don't have that and just go for the easy, okay? John 
9. Check this out. John 9, verses 39 on to verse 41. John 9, verses 39 on to verse 41. And Jesus said, For judgment I am come into this world, that they which see not might see, and they which see might be made blind. And some of the Pharisees, tradition, scripture, tradition, <laughs> scripture, okay? And some of the Pharisees which heard him, which were with him, heard these words and said unto him, <laughs> Are we blind also? They had the Torah. Okay. Look, look, before we read verse 41, which I, which probably you already did, um, Romans 3, verses 1 and 2. What advantage then hath the Jew, or what profit is there of circumcision? Much of your way, chiefly because unto them were committed the oracles of God, God's chosen people, Israel, the Hebraic people taken out of Shem, not Ham. Definitely not Japheth, okay? Okay? So, unto them were committed the oracles of God. If anyone should have known, it should have been them. Jesus said unto them, If you were blind, ignorant, you, you could say ignorant, don't, don't know, ye should have no sin. But now ye say, we see, therefore, your sin remaineth. See, they claim to see, but yet, like the rich young ruler, good master, and the Lord's like, why are you calling me good? There's none good but God. Get, get the gravity of that. Jesus is saying to him, I'm God. Why are you calling me good master? I'm, I'm God. I'm your father. Okay? <laughs> I'm, I'm the, the Mashiach. I'm the Messiah. Okay? <laughs> I am. What don't you get? But they saw it, didn't they? Oh, so many people have. And what was, what was the lie? Thou shalt not surely die. In the day, for God doth know, quoting Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 on verse 5, look it up. In the day that thou eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods. Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians one. Okay. Where do you go for comfort? Where do you go for comfort? Hmm? Many people claiming to see, but they're blind. Because God hath poured, because they think they are, they, they think they are, therefore they are, right? But when you are your own God, then you are your own comfort. Then you go to the devil, Satan, the world, the flesh for comfort. First, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, okay? Verses 3 on verse 6. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in all, there's another one, all, our tribulation. All our tribulation. That we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. You've been through it before? See, there's a reason why some of you are going through something that somewhere down the line, the Lord might orchestrate something. It's like, hey, brother, I've been through it. I've been through it. I've been through it. Vain is the help of man, but the comfort that comes from the Lord you know, when comforting someone, the, I've heard this stated like this, and this is truth. The ministry, if you will, of presence, just sitting there. But if someone doesn't want to be comforted, 
but they want to choose to be angry. They want to have that anger rest in their bosom. Give them the scripture. And if they don't take that, then there's some bigger problems. Verse 5. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. And whether we be afflicted, is for you, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer. Or whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. And again, Isaiah chapter 9, this God of all comfort, who is the source of your comfort? Isaiah 9, one verse. We'll read the other one a little bit later. One verse, verse 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counsel, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. Yes, Jesus Christ is the Father. Prince of Peace. Prince of Peace. Put that in the air. John 14, 26 and 27. John 14, 26 and 27. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. And the Holy Ghost is the Lord. The Lord is that Spirit. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Philippians 4. Let the scriptures do the talking. Philippians 4. Philippians 4. Verses 5 on verse 8. Let your moderation, moderation, not being part of that, holding back, Staying on the outside, looking in. Okay? We know, we know all Chadez is coming down the pipe. We know that. It's good to be informed of it. Yes, it is. But we can't dwell on it. This, this is doomed. We got to keep shoveling coal until it's gone down and he's like, come up hither or we're taken out. Or we die. One of us die, you know. Philippians 4, verses 5 on verse 8. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Here, I'm offering you the Lord Jesus Christ through the Scriptures. Can I tell you about Him? Come, let us reason together, you and I. Okay? Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Be careful for nothing. Doesn't mean to be careless. Doesn't mean to be careless. Be careful for nothing. What do we have to fear? Hmm? If the Lord has orchestrated a moment, if the Lord is the author of whatever it is you're doing or what is going on, you can face that in the confidence. Like Job. The Lord gave. The Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And fall down and worship. Dude, that's all we can do. Okay? Alright? That's all you and I can do, saints. That's it. Okay? We can make it worse by things we do, perhaps. Yes. But, I mean, judgment is coming. America, sooner or later is going to fall. 
Okay? America is going to implode sooner or later. The, the hostility, the anger, the hate for that which is good out there, it is at, you know, it's like if this were a carbonated beverage and you, you, you shake it up and it's building to the pressure where the, the pop tops off, you know? Excuse me. <laughs> Good thing I didn't hit the scriptures with that. <laughs> All right? We know this is coming. Be careful for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And here's what, and here's what Christianity gives, but in a false way. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. See, Christianity offers a peace, which we, uh, which we addressed in the previous video, I believe. Okay? A piece of a piece in what? The things of the world? For the fashion thereof falleth away. But the peace, the shalom, I love that word. Shalom, peace. The peace and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And the admonition here? The exhortation, I should say? Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on Go back to Proverbs 14. Proverbs 14. Go back there. Let's read this. Proverbs 14. Verses 12 on to verse 17. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Are you really saved? I believe in my heart, the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. You trust in your own heart, you are a fool. Are you really saved? Where, who do you go to for comfort? There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. And here's, this is addressing a false comfort. Check this out. Even in laughter, the heart is sorrowful, and the end of that mirth is heaviness. Hmm. Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we shall die. Isaiah 22? Huh? Isaiah 22? See, a lot of what is fake right now is doing exactly this. Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we shall die. Let us... Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Isaiah 22. Okay? Verses 12 on to verse 14. And in that day did the Lord God of hosts call to weeping and to mourning and to baldness and to girding with sackcloth. And behold, joy and gladness, slaying oxen and killing sheep, eating flesh and drinking wine. Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we shall die. Live it up. It's okay. Don't worry about it. You just believe you're saved. Don't worry about it. That's a false peace. See, the peace of God which passeth all understanding is not there in what is being offered you in the world in Christianity. And it was revealed in mine ears by the Lord of hosts, surely this iniquity shall not be purged from you till ye die, saith the Lord God of hosts. And that's the scary part. How many people are going to die in their sin? How many people are going to, the Lord has to kill of the saints who has something that they just 
refuse to give up. Drinking, smoking, gluttony, filth on the internet, music. <laughs> Recently, um, I had a chance to play the drums. Drums, you know, but, uh, you know. Um, and I've told I was a really good drummer. I could play the drums very well. And I had a chance recently to play the drums again. I thought I was going to die afterwards. And I paid a heavy price for that foolishness. It's like, you know, Brad, uh, you're not playing drums for a reason. Well, health-wise, with my heart, I couldn't take it anyway. But the, what, the five minutes I played the, the drums, I mean, people were like, you know, and this woman said to me, you still got it. Yeah, yeah, I do. And then that whole night and day, that whole day and night, oh, did I pay a price for that. Oh, that was horrible. Should never have done that. It's the reason why I don't do that anymore. Because the Lord doesn't want me to do that. But anyway. Verse 14. The backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways. And a good man shall be satisfied from himself. And... For our instruction and my righteousness, who is the hidden man of the heart? Well, that be the Lord Jesus Christ. So the Lord within you, the God of all comfort today, the simple believeth every word, but the prudent man looketh well to his going. A wise man feareth and departeth from evil, but the fool who says in their heart there is no God, rageth and is confident. I'm saying because I just believe. I'm going to kill you. Okay. Go ahead. You'd be doing me a favor. Especially recently. Verse 17. He that is soon angry dealeth foolishly. And a man of wicked devices is he. And this thing about the comforts of men. Go to Job 16. Job 16. Verses 1 and verse 10. Keeping in mind what we looked at in Proverbs already. Job's three friends. They sat there. The ministry of presence. Didn't say a word to him. When they opened their mouth, they started accusing Job. Then Job, verses 1 and verse 10. Then Job answered and said, I have heard many such things. Miserable comforters are ye all. Shall vain words have an end? Or what emboldeneth thee that thou speak, that thou answerest? I also could speak as ye do. If your soul were in my soul's stead, I could heap up words against you and shake mine head at you. But I would strengthen you with my mouth, and the moving of my lips should assuage your grief. And what better way to comfort someone than pointing them to God through the scriptures? Though I speak, my grief is not assuaged. And though I forbear, what am I eased? But now he hath made me weary. Thou hast made desolate all my company. And thou hast lifted me up with wrinkles. And thou hast filled, excuse me, filled me with wrinkles, which is a witness against me. And my leanness rising up in me beareth witness to my face. He teareth me in his wrath. Who hateth me? He gnasheth upon me with his teeth. 
my enemy sharpeneth his eyes upon me. Which was happening with his three buddies, his three friends, accusing him when a time when they should have kept their mouth shut. You know? Just sitting there, being there. The ministry of presence. It's when you start pata, pata, pata. Unless it's the Lord saying, hey, let's, let's read scripture. All right, go read a verse of scripture. Let me, here, read this. They have gaped upon me with their mouth. They have smitten me upon the cheek reproach of them. They have gathered themselves together against me. And yes, when you are down in the dumps, when you are down in the dumps, oh, that's when, they, that's when the devils like to come out and offer you different comforts and stuff. It's like, hey, why don't you, why don't you go get yourself a bottle of liquor? A little won't hurt. Hey, why don't you go and smoke that marijuana? A little won't hurt. Hey, why don't you light up a cigarette? A little help? A little won't hurt. Why don't you go watch a Hollywood movie to distract you? A little won't hurt. But see, we saints, go to Psalm 69. The Christological uh, Psalm 69 verses 16 on to verse 25. Hear me, O Lord, for thy loving kindness is good. Turn unto me according to the multitude of thy tender mercies. See, we as saints, we as the church, our problems we need to face head on. Okay? You know the Lord, when there's a problem, what does He do? He puts His finger right on that problem. When there is a problem, brethren, we need to face it head on. And how do you face it head on? Physically sometimes, yes, but I found the best way to fight a problem or whatever head on is first getting down on your knees and seeking the Lord. I know about Joshua where he's like, get up! Why are you, what? You got some, look, these guys, they've taken of the accursed, uh, Akan, he's taken of the accursed thing. Get up, you got something to do. Okay, I understand that. But see, we need to face things head on. And we face them head on in the Lord. Okay? Verse 17. And hide not thy face from thy servant, for I am in trouble. Hear me speedily. Draw nigh unto my soul and redeem it. Deliver me because of mine enemies. Thou hast known my reproach and my shame and my dishonor. Mine adversaries are all before thee. Reproach hath broken my heart. I am full of heaviness, and I looked for some to take pity, but there was none, and for comforters, but I found none. Now, here's the part of the uh, prophecy of our Lord, okay? But also keep in mind for this, when you are in struggles, doesn't it seem like the devil is right there to give you these other distractions? Huh? These other sources of comfort? Huh? And he was on the cross. They gave me also gall for my meat. And in my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. And I understand some of you actually like to drink vinegar. I'll drink apple cider vinegar just a little in water because of the things. But drink, drinking it straight? Ugh. But whatever. Okay? Let their table... Ah. Yeah. Mm, never mind. Let their table become a snare before them. And that which should have been for their welfare, let it become a trap. And that's how Satan can trap us. When you are at your worst, that's when you, you need to seek the Lord in all things. 
and don't let the devil come at you. He's going to come. He's going to come. But don't take the bait that Satan offers you to distract you instead of facing your problems straight on in the Lord. Let their table <laughs> become a snare before them. Well, a certain guy at a table being a snare. Go figure that one out. And that which should be have and that which should have been for their welfare, let it become a trap. Let their eyes be darkened that they see not. And make their loins continually to shake. Why? Because they have chosen things that hey Satan, what? All this will I give you. If you fall down and worship me, all will be thine. Huh? And then, oh, with commercials for that disgusting TikTok, flashes you the world in a moment of time. Yeah. Let their eyes be darkened that they see not, and make their loins continually to shake. People that are afraid of what's going on out there. I'm, I'm not afraid of what's going on. Are you? Yeah. Pour out thine indignation upon them, and let thy wrathful anger take hold of them. Let their habitation be desolate, and let none dwell in their tents. Um, Isaiah 9, 9, verse 7. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David, and upon his kingdom to order it, and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Peace. The Prince of Peace. The second coming. Okay. The kingdom of heaven. There's still going to be sin. Yes. Yes. But he is the Prince of Peace. And his government. The kingdom of heaven. Upon the throne of David. Son of David. King of the Jews. Lord of, King of kings. Lord of lords. Okay. But government. There is a self-government. Let your moderation be known unto all men. Remember, these are they that despise government. Okay? Self-government. Okay? Who governs us? The Lord through the scriptures. Not at gunpoint, but we got to make the right decisions. See? Go back now to Isaiah 29. Isaiah 29. And instead of going to the scriptures in a time when you are in a process of being broken, along comes the little smiley, zombified, uh, Richlingite or easy believism devil. Just believe. Just believe. Just believe. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Just believe and you'll be fine. Well, everything around you is going to done, right? But see, is that the brokenness? Is that a sorrow for just uh, things of the world? That when, as soon as you are, you know, like Pharaoh, okay? Who, who in his heart believed he was a god? And then when he saw there was respite, he just kept going on in his way. You're sorry because of things that are happening around you. But are you truly broken? And see, in that state, in that balance, okay, the Lord can take things away from you, yes, to bring on that sorrow. And that sorrow ought to be there to cause a breaking of your self-righteousness. But along in that state, just believe. Whoop! Overbrokenness again. And that's what Christianity does. Someone is not willing to deal with their own self-righteousness through the scriptures, through the Lord, so that the Lord can break them of it. No. Verses 13 on to verse 14 in Isaiah 29. Wherefore the Lord said, for as much as this people draw near me with their mouth, and with their lips to honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. 
Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this people, even a marvelous work and a wonder. For the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid. Matthew chapter 23. Matthew chapter 23. Beginning at verse 24. These are the guys who say they can see today. Okay? Matthew 23 is describing the climate before the redemption of the purchased possession. How many of these Christians brethren, saints, you atheists, lost people, how many of these Christians claim to see? Oh, and here, here's the Lord, you know. Well, that's not very Christ-like, okay? Ye blind guides, verses 24 on to the close of the chapter. Ye blind guides, which strain at a gnat and swallow a camel. Strain at the littlest, idiotiest, bittiest piece while the whole while swallowing the big lie. You see this in the enemies of our Lord. Okay? The Lord could, would have you to do something and your enemies, the enemies of our Lord will focus on one little aspect and blow that out of proportion. Okay? Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Video about the hypocrites. You know, we as saints sometimes are hypocrites. Mm -hmm. We are. Paul was. Peter was. Okay. For ye may clean the outside of the cup, of the cup and the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. I have witnessed this in many false converts. They will make a visible change. But they're the same person they always were on the inside. For ye may clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Thou blind Pharisee, Cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter. Get at it. Face it headlong. Okay? You're not a good person. You can't do better by altering the countenance or the physical. You have to be born again. You have to be broken of your self-righteousness. And to see self-righteousness disguised in a form of Christianity is absolutely disgusting. It is vomitous. Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are like unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and of all act uncleanness. Excuse me. Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because ye build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous, and say, If we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them. In the blood of the prophets. Holier than thou. Which is a stench in the Lord's nose. Wherefore ye be witnesses unto yourselves. That ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. By our, our enemies themselves being judges. Because they don't want to face the problem head on. Fill ye up then the measure of your fathers. Ye serpents. Oh, wow. That's not very Christ-like. What Christ are you talking about? 
<laughs> ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets, and wise men, and scribes, and some of them ye shall kill and crucify, and some of them shall ye scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city. And upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth, from the blood of righteous Abel, unto the blood of Zacharias, son of Barachias, whom ye slew between the temple and the altar. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. And of course, context, he's talking about that generation specifically in context. But, look at what's happening. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Free will. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. For I say unto you, ye shall not see me henceforth till ye shall say, Blessed is he that came from the name of the Lord. See, you don't want religiosity. You need the Lord. And when Satan, in your dire moments, brethren, people, because it's going to get bad. It's bad. What we're going through right now, it's really bad. It's really bad. But see, that's when we need to seek the Lord. Psalm 77. We're almost done. Psalm 77. I cried unto God with my voice, even unto God with my voice, and he gave ear unto me. In the day of my trouble, I sought the Lord. My sore ran in the night and ceased not. My soul refused to be comforted. Wait a minute, what does that mean? Isn't he the God? Yes, he is. My soul is not going to be comforted by things of the world. My soul is not going to be comforted by the things of man. My comfort comes from the Lord. I remembered God and was troubled. I complained and my spirit was overwhelmed. Silla. Thou holdest mine eyes waking. I am so troubled that I cannot speak. I have considered the days of old, the years of ancient times. I call to remembrance my song in the night. I commune with mine own heart, and my spirit made diligent, diligent search, self-examination. Self-examination. Don't run from it. Attack it right up in the middle. That's where the action is. That's where it's at. Will the Lord cast off forever? And will he be favorable no more? Is his mercy clean gone forever? Doth his promise fail forevermore? Hath God forgotten to be gracious? Hath he in anger shut up his tender mercies? Salah. You know, we can get to a point it's like, Lord! Lord! And I said, this is my infirmity. See, this is my infirmity. I call to remember, verse 6, my song in the night. I commune with mine own heart. And my spirit made diligent search. Okay? And this is a psalm of Asaph to the chief musician. A psalm to be sung. Okay? 
And I said, this is my infirmity, but I will remember the years of the right hand of the Most High, taking comfort in the Lord. Yes, Lord, I deserve this. Your will be done. The Lord hath given. The Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. This is my infirmity. But I will remember the Lord. I will remember the works of old. I will remember the works of the old, of the Lord. Excuse me. Surely I will remember thy wonders of old. I will meditate also of all thy work and talk of thy doings. Thy work. The work of the cross. Okay? The work that he did on you when you came to him on his terms and he saved you. Okay? Talk of what he did. Talk about him. Thy way, thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary. Who is so great a God as our God? Who are you going to compare our God onto? See, most Christians and everybody else, they make God in their own image. Meaning, he, they, here they are, God's here. Here's an atheist and here's God. Here's a Christian and here's God. They think that, you know, they make of God nothing. Pawn. A genie in a bottle. Okay? Thou art the God that doest wonders. Thou hast declared thy strength among the people. <laughs> Death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? Thou hast with thine arm redeemed thy people. The sons of Jacob and Joseph, Selah, which we Gentiles are grafted into that tree today. The waters saw thee, O God. The waters saw thee. They were afraid. The depths also were troubled. Remember what we looked at in Revelation 17 about the waters being likened on the people? Also, you can liken this onto the parting of the Red Sea. Okay? The clouds poured out water. The sky sent out a sound. Thine arrows also went abroad. Arrows you could probably liken unto lightning. Okay? The voice of thy thunder was in heaven. Oh, and that right there, uh, where Jesus was, you know, some heard a thunder, the others heard a voice, and the Lord said, this voice came for your benefit. I just totally bradized that, as I believe it will be at the redemption of the purchased possession. Lost people are going to hear thunder. God is going to say unto us, Come up hither. How is he going to call all of our names at the same time? All our names being different? Hey, he's God. He can do that. Okay? But come up hither. Okay? The voice of thy thunder was in heaven. Was in the heaven. The lightnings lightened the world. The earth trembled and shook. Thy way is in the sea and thy path in the great waters and thy footsteps are not known yeah because wide is the way that leadeth unto destruction but narrow is the way that leadeth unto life and it's in the waters amongst the people thou lettest thy people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Psalm 84. Psalm 84. Verse 7 on verse 12. They go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion appeareth before God. Hmm. They go from strength to strength. Twofold. Like it says in Romans, from faith to faith. From faith in what God will do to faith in what God has done, it has finished. Hence, under the law, faith in what God was going to do. Today, it's finished. Okay? Go from strength, your own strength, which is vain, to the Lord's strength. You know where we're going. You ought to know. 2 Corinthians, okay, 2 Corinthians, 
2 Corinthians chapter 12, <laughs> verse 9. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect for weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. <coughs> they go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion appears before God. What's the other fold? Think about this. People who are going to the devil for comfort, they go from one to the other and it doesn't satisfy. That's not really lending itself according to the text, but that is a thought to consider. Verse 8. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob, Selah. Behold, O God, our shield, and look upon the face of thine anointed. For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Even for a moment to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. For the Lord God is a sun, S-U-N, there, and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man that trusteth in thee. So many people say they trust in the Lord, but they actually deny him. So many people believe in their heart, they're a fool. You know, it's really easy to see what's coming, to look upon what's coming. It's really easy to look at the battlefield, at the horrific things that we're going through ourselves personally right now. It's really easy to look at that. But like Job said, so what? Naked came I into this world, and naked I'm going out. The Lord gave, the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. His will be done. All we got to do, brethren, is do what the Lord says. Live our lives in accordance with the Scripture. We're going to make mistakes. Unless you're some of these perfect creatures. <laughs> Don't be troubled. Don't be troubled. We have an expected end. Take comfort in that. Take courage in that. What a friend we have in Jesus. That's going to be it for this video today. Thank you so much for watching this if you do. You know, the devil's praying to their father, the devil, uh, that um, tribulation and stuff come upon us. Dear saints, please pray for us. We're, we're going through some pretty bad things right now. Please pray for us. Please pray for us. We have, we have a roof over our head. The Lord has provided. We are going through horrific spiritual attacks here. Please pray for us. Pray for each other. Pray for each other. And let come what, what, what will come. Let come what will come. A lot of people are angry. So what? What are you going to do about it? You're going to go off in a vain shoe? One thing you lack. And the Lord always puts his finger on that one thing. Face it. Face it. Because guess what? All the distractions. You're not going to get away from it. So face it head on. Thank you brethren. Love you. 
and I will see you again in the next video, whenever or whatever that will be.